What's going, guys? Welcome to your public, uh, Soviet broadcasting station, where we play Soviet music all the time. Uh, all jokes aside, um, I wanna, I'm gonna play on this SMP I play on called the Miner's SMP. Right now, I got a little bit of a communist, um, village over here, consisting of hoguns. Uh, I don't know where these came from, but either way, it's good to be back on the server. I haven't played in a while. Mostly, I've just been playing with uh, Santino and uh, our uh, su super wig. Uh, let me show you my skin. Now, uh, today I want to try to uh, mix things up. I'm going to play some uh, historic. Uh, this is in my place list section. It consists of Soviet, uh, Japanese, and a little bit of modern uh, historic uh, music. So for now, I'm just gonna be chilling. Right now, it's Katushka uh, playing. So just enjoy my gameplay while I'm playing Minecraft. I might edit while well, once in a while in this video. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I might just skip a little bit, so the video might skip around. Uh, I actually really love Katushka as a song. Has a very nice melody to it, like right now, and I like the lyrics. <laughs> Push us down, I know some of the lyrics to this. Push down, say, I knew ya. I'll also get to show, I know. Push them, steal, I knew ya. I'll also get to show, Oh, yes, I, uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, I, I... Okay, I'm just gonna stop singing. <laughs> we are the Just gonna continue this thing. I'm gonna lower down my headphone volume. Okay, there we go. Just blasting in my ears. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I never cut down that tree since it has a beehive. Yeah. I don't know what song is after this. I kind of forgot. I know most of the first ones are Soviet, and then after a while, it's the Imperial Japanese music, though. Discover matches all the cash back. You okay, there's the <laughs> card at the end of your first year. It's amazing because Discover is uh, accepted at 99% of places in the U.S. that take credit cards. Hell. Learn more okay. at discover.com/yes. 2021 Nielsen Report. Limitations apply. Oh, yeah, there's my sponsor right there. Sponsor plug. Okay, I forgot. I think it might have been Katushka, but it has, like, English subtitles. So we're not going to see those. There we go. Over here are some other players that live in my little uh, utopia. They're like new players of the server. I've just been playing for probably like a, a month by now. I don't know what I'm gonna do, I might go mining a little bit. Uh, I might get an axe soon, I have one. Oh. Long live the Soviet Union. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I might have the act. Uh, uh, there might be a little bit of lag since I'm using YouTube at the same time. Now 
After this might be the March of the Artillerymen, so I hope you enjoy that. Oh, let's go, classic. I don't know if you guys are hearing this, so I just want to test out the audio of my desktop. This last video, by what you can see, it was very quiet. Even uh, the channel ABCs uh, counted that it was their favorite ASMR channel. So, I'm going to work on desktop audio to whenever I'm playing with Santino or DeAndre. So, yeah. Oh yes, I gotta show you guys something. To all two of you guys watching, I'm gonna show you the very important documents. Right. Oh yeah, wait. Hey, you know, I feel like naming this the Nafla Nation Republic. So, today the people have risen and chosen communism. On their ideology created by Marx and led by Lenin. In the name of Marx and Lenin, we the workers create this new republic stretching from the ocean to... No. Alright. Why are you looking at me? Go eat. Go eat your food. Right. Rivers are cools of the republic. All people welcomed. Nothing doesn't matter. Our republic's lands doesn't go past rivers and oceans, which means we can't go invade unless attacked. I forgot to add that part. Coastal city near us. I might show you guys that later. Coastal city near the capital. We can't invade or occupy unless they want to join our socialist union. We only have colonies when we owe if we want a war. Anyone can join the union. We shall defend communism by supporting Marxist revolutions or wars. Leninism is the main ideology. And here's the anthem. Actually, in the playlist, I put the anthem in there. Ah, song just got work. Yeah, let's do. I should this should be done for you. Hey, mine time. That's right. Oh. Oh, I forgot I lost my axe. I mean, not my axe, my sword. Hey. 
You guys don't know how many times I've lost equipment in this game, in wars and other things. Wait, fuck. Ah, uh, I forgot I need to do this into the loop. I was about to make a shield out of oak logs. I forgot. Eh. Uh, lots. The creation of a new shield. Oh. Hey, let's go. That's right, I need to make a sword. Must. I have. Okay, wait. If I make stuff out of cobblestone. Okay, I was thinking about something else. Um, okay. I might bring these just in case. Um, but you know what? I'm never going to use this board anyway. Okay. Oh, yeah, I already. Actually, I need to I forgot which one's better. Three. They should make that. Okay, we ran out of gold. Hey, uh, might be another episode tomorrow since Santino is so busy right now. He's texting me. Oh. Hey, right. back to making up food. Hey, I'm all decked out. Let's go towards the mine. I have a mine over there, but I'm pretty sure I've mined it dry. So for now, we have to go to over here. I, oh wait, I forgot. I need to get some more emeralds for uh. Oh, let's go. The nineteen forty four anthem. I'll say if you if you want to hear this uh, music, it's in my playlist section. <laughs> uh, where's the? No matter if you like communists, you gotta agree this anthem slaps.
I think in about five more songs we're gonna get into the Imperial Japanese and then Ottoman and then uh, I added a few more songs that I actually like. Um, two of them are about Nick Hilde, the other one's about the Bismarck, so I hope you guys will enjoy those songs. Alright, we're getting close to 11. Strip mining time. Oh, we found something. I oh, never mind. Never strip mine. I hear water nearby. I don't know about you guys. I think the next one is actually the 1970s um, Soviet anthem. So basically, after destalinization. There we go. Okay, we might be getting close. I found redstone. Let's go some more iron. I've been getting an iron shortage recently. I swear to God, if I actually get crop, uh, copyrighted for these songs, that would be kind of sad. Because I'm pretty sure um, there's uh, someone trying to claim. Uh, I think it was either. The Red Army is the strongest, or um, or uh, Lenin's young again. Oh, that's lava. We might be near diamonds, but they're trying to copyright one of those. So I, so I think I might get copyrighted for this. Such a beautiful song, though. Even if you disagree with a lot of communism's ideology, I you gotta you have to just admit this is a very powerful song to listen to. I think I've been near this area. I remember seeing a water uh, around this area because I've been oh cool. I should bring a water bucket to explore more of this lava. Oh wait, I need to go down level. Right here? Oh, 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 
I think the next one will be either we shall be like Lennon or that was still going on. Hey, this one we shall be like Lennon. There's no English lyrics for these, so I don't really know what they're singing about. I know, like, the little chorus is kind of like saying we shall. It says Lennon, so I'm suspecting that's where the title of the song comes from. Right there, I think that's where uh, the song gets its name from, so. So far, we haven't run into any mobs yet. Actually, is there anyone on the server? Nope. Okay, it's night time. I gotta run back to the village. Oh god. Oh god, archers. Yeah, thank God. Oh, God. Uh, I, I hate how the Iron Golems doesn't even kill the creepers. Oh yes, so he's yeah. I try I should close the mine door. Okay, after this is probably the battle is still going on, or the battle is, is going again. So that's how to like that. Oh yeah, it's the the song. Uh, over this is uh, the song that's playing right now is actually the anthem of my country. <laughs> oh god, wait. Alright. Hey, over here by what you see is the little city I was talking about. And the an and the, not the anthem, the constitution. They haven't been on for like, uh, four weeks. I only see them like a few times. They have an RV over there. I think uh, it's like, uh, two friends, uh, on the server. Because one of them was living in that little, like, uh, van. And then over here was the person in Neverite armor. And then over here is the border. This one actually has subtitles, which is the main reason why I used to ask the anthem. I just wrote down the lyrics. Anyway, I could probably go into the anthem. I don't know what part it is in the song. Just uh, probably. Good. Okay, I think it's at this part. I should right, know it's the. Hey, it's at this part.
Hey, right, basically at the end of the song, they just repeat, uh, Lennon is young again. Yeah. That's right, I forgot to share my sheep. From you guys can see by theme is that I most of the Minecraft rules I play I make bow guns. Oh, right now things. I got 19. And I'm gonna put the rest of the stuff back in my chest. in there okay marchers of uh the march of the defenders of um, moscow i'm pretty sure okay i was right okay charcoal the rest of that will go with the torches Okay, ship. Oh, my ear is just okay. Okay. Uh, that's just a ripoff. Uh, that this is the main reason why I had iron shortage. I had like uh, three stacks of iron. I traded them all for emeralds for this pickaxe, and then I died while using it. I forgot. I think I died in lava when someone punched me into one, and that pit of lava. So yeah, a waste of money, and also iron that I could use towards something else. Okay, I don't have a hoe to plant anymore. Uh, okay, I might just do more shearing. Right now, I'm am I'm, I'm still making a, a library. Let me show you. Right there. I don't know what to call it yet. And then over here, I've I'm uh at first I was gonna make it a uh, a wood building, but after a while, I thought I could do brick. And then after that, I'm planning a plan. To make multiple uh, two factories, one of them for tools for toolsmiths and weaponry uh, experts, and the other one over there for like um, probably I'll have like Fletchers and like uh, shearers and some other stuff. And over here is just agricultural area, so that's just my plan for expanding this village because I want to because I'm thinking about making it tax for other people to. Uh, for other people to buy from our villagers. Ooh, I love this song. On the hills of Manchuria. For now, I'm just gonna be silent. Тихо вокруг ветер туман, 
унес. На сопках маньчжурских воины спят, И русских не слышат слез. Плачет, плачет мать родная, Плачет молодая жена. Плачут все, как один человек, Злой рог и судьбу Uh, so I'm gonna be silent for this version because it's actually the original version of On the Hills of Manchuria. Okay, let me explain why I enjoy On the Hills of Manchuria. The main reason why is because it's not really a Soviet song. It's more of a 
Russian. Oh yeah, the one that's playing right now is from uh, a mod for uh, Hearts of Iron 4 called Kaiserreich, and it's um it's kind of part of the soundtrack. It's like an alternate version of uh, On the Hills of Manchuria. But the reason why I love it is because the original version, it it's depicting a battle during the Russo-Japanese War, which was basically a war between uh, Russia and Imperial Japan. Uh, on a based on what uh, port in uh in Korea or like in between China and Korea like in that little fine spot like near the border of them so the main reason why is because Japan didn't want want anyone else to encroach on their territory like the Russians and also they just annexed the Korea uh, not that long ago and oh I'll be talking whenever it's the calm parts of the song. So, and it culminated in the Russo-Japanese War in, in 1904, I believe. And then it ended in 1906. And this song was uh, made after the war based on hope. So, the song was made after the Japanese, uh, and it was made after, um, it was made after a battle, uh, or, the song was, um, basically made after a battle that happened in Korea, like, in the northern part of Korea, near, um, Manchuria, which is kind of like a part of China that's northern of, uh, Korea. So, this guy, I forgot his name, it's some Russian name. But he made the song, and the beginning of the song, which is the reason why I mainly like the- oh. So the original one, it was like the first part of the song, it's a waltz, so in the middle it's like really intense, which is the reason why it has very intense like instrumentals but the first part is about like all all is quiet and here's another version of it it's uh i think it's uh, instrumental but basically the first part is like it being like all calm and then like a military uh battalions marching while there's like heavy gunfire the middle part is like uh hand-to-hand -hand combat like in the trenches of like the japanese and then the last part is thinking about how the soldiers see dead bodies around them and how they're mourning them. So, that's like the original. But there's uh, two versions of the song. The original, which is depicting the battle. Uh, and then the second version, which is the Soviet version. Which was made in, I believe, when the, when Jap in, when the Imperial Japanese Empire was kind of expanding towards the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union felt threatened, and since it would be the second time Russia would face uh, Japan in the 20th and the 20th century, um, they uh, Stalin, I believe, or was it, or it was like the Alexander Intsunov, um made uh, created uh, basically I'm trying to think uh, revised the on the hills of Manchuria instead of making it about the battle, they were making it about afterwards. So there in the song, it's like, um, there's a part where it's like, uh, the young wife and mother are, like, mourning their son that fought in the, uh, in the Russo-Japanese War. 
And then at the end of song, it's, to, it's basically saying, like, the they scream, uh, you shall be avenged, which uh, is kind of, was kind of a song for World War II and for the Soviet Union to, uh, to destroy the Imperial Japanese Army that killed many Russian people, or many Russian soldiers during the Russo-Japanese War. So that's the main reason why I enjoy the song. There's a lot of, like, uh, versions of the song that just show the same impact of a battle. Personally, I like the second version because it's sung by my favorite, uh, like, the favorite version is sung by, uh, Mark Shin, uh, Troshan, or Troshan. Alright, here's a- now, when we're on the hills of Manchuria, Russian songs, here comes the Imperial Japanese songs. I think this one's Battalion. I think that's how you say that. This song has really good lyrics and, um, uh, what's- oh yeah, really good lyrics and, like, a very good instrumental. It has, like, a very, like, uh, um, like, over-the-tone, uh, instrumental, which is- and the, the lyrics- Uh, the- the backstory of the song is actually pretty interesting. It wasn't made for World War II, it was made for a rebellion that happened in Japan. Uh, it's basically, um, song sings about how the how the how the emperor's enemies are strong but with the with the will of the emperor and their and his soldiers the soldiers are more stronger than them so that's basically the theme of the song is that you may be strong but without the will of the emperor you're not strong enough to defeat his uh soldiers so I think this I think the rebellion I forgot what it was. The rebellion happened in 1926. So this is most people mistake the song for being for World War II, but it was mostly for the rebellion sung by soldiers. But then it got popular for World War II. And after this, I think it's the O.D. Show uh, Restoration song, which I might talk about a little bit while it's being played. Hmm, maybe it'll not be played or else and they're as looting. Yeah, I'm gonna check, be right back. Oh, yeah, back, it just had a problem. Hey, right. so I might be talking while the song's being played. I want to try to explain some of these songs since I know of uh, a little bit of knowledge about it. This one, honestly, I like the lyrics and the stinger, and also the instrumentals. A lot of these songs on this playlist I actually really enjoy, like as historical songs. So this song was um uh, um was for the song was made for soldiers that during a period called the uh, Showa Restoration. Which was basically a thing where they want to reverse emperors to like restore like some of like older, some of like uh, old Japan, 
before the Meiji Restoration, which was where, like, uh, they stopped being, like, they stopped the samurai, they stopped the tradition of the samurai by killing most of them if they did not follow the Meiji's, um, orders. So most of them were, most of the samurai were killed off during the Meiji Restoration. But, uh, this, uh, restoration actually failed. It only lasted for three to four days. There's actually a really good movie based on it called Four Days of Blood and Snow. But anyway, the song was made for those troops, and the whole thing is trying to like uh, rip, bring back old Japan. And that's over, like theme. It actually failed pretty horribly. There was a few like fighting in the street during this restoration. But yeah, it's not really talked about much since it didn't have much impact on Japan. But it might have a bigger impact if it actually succeeded. Try and find the map guy. I'm pretty sure after this are two kamikaze songs. This is a pretty typical kamikaze song. I've seen most people play this, um, like in, like whenever you just look up kamikaze song, this is the one that mostly pops up. Kind of like for iron. Hey, how's our villager over there? Where did they come from? Maybe after all these songs that I'm playing, I'm just gonna get off and probably uh, let this video upload. So this video might come out tomorrow. Somewhere around the... Uh, the next one is a more extreme kamikaze song. With uh, pretty good instrumentals. This one is actually very... Th these instrumentals are very unique towards other Jap Imperial Japanese music around the time. As kind of like an upbeat, like, um, 
like um, instrumental. Even though the lyrics are very drabbing and dark about how Kamikaze Pyo will never see their family again. And also how if they don't succeed then their whole way of life will be destroyed. For like a very unique and like upbeat instrumentals as a very dark uh, lyric. Considering that's kind of how it is. Uh, not much people know this, but most Kamikaze pilots didn't really want to go towards suicidal missions. They were forced by their officers and generals. But more of the fanatical ones, like probably like 18 or like 20 year olds around that age that were brainwashed by, by Japanese propaganda at the time, probably wanted to go towards suicidal missions. But most of the time, they didn't really want to. Uh, go crash into an American ship. Oh. I've never seen this part of uh, Cave yet. I haven't really been playing much of uh, Minecraft new update to Cave 1. Let's go, I found crack cocaine. Hey, there's some more on me. Okay, copper. Actually, another fun fact is that Kamikaze actually means divine wind in Japanese because they're in the Mongol invasion of uh, of like uh, the 12th uh, in the in the 12th uh, like in the 13th century um, when the Mongols invaded um, there was basically a I think it was on the island Iki Island or uh, Tsushima uh, when there when the samurai and the Mongols were fighting a typhoon came and that's where the term Kamikaze comes from. It means divine wind. Cause, uh, at the time, the samurai and like the nobles of Japan thought that like the gods came in and helped the samurai fight against the Mongols. And then, it, and the funny thing is that it actually happened the second time for in the second Mongol invasion, where a kamikaze, or not, yeah, kamikaze or like a, a typhoon just hit uh, the second invasion, which is kind of funny. Which uh, led the Japanese like nobles and samurai to believe more that the gods were on their side and that the gods didn't like the Mongol invaders. Which is an uh, interesting history right there. After this, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Sink the Bismarck by uh, Johnny Dorfman. Oh. Hey, our now sponsor, McDonald's. Let's go. I ate this uh, last episode. That's the weedy mail. Holy, I have lost stuff. Order ahead on the McDonald's app. I don't need that. Oh, never mind. It's, uh. Okay, it's, uh. Ooh, this one's actually 11 minute. Uh, this one's 50 days at Peking, which happened during the Boxer Rebellion. Oh, remembering the men who lived through 55 days at Peking. Uh, the Boxer Rejection against all nations of the diplomatic corps. This song is actually pretty interesting. Um, the Boxer Rebellion was basically was basically a, a rebellion. Um, it was also uh, supported by the Empress of China at the time, where um, basically the boxers were a group that didn't want like uh, Germany, Russia, like all these like big um, superpowers, like and also Japan. Um, to like uh, have like the sphere of influence in China because uh, oh, they go to begin. 
But the four in devils we drift them from Peking. Where at where because at the time China was kind of getting abused by like all of like the colonial powers. Like the type of countries that would have colonies in Africa or the Middle East. So the Boxer Rebellion happened. It lasted uh, like at least, at least a year. And the main spot of invasion was uh, Peking, which is where like the royal like uh, palace was and where the boxers were held up once uh, once like uh, reinforcements came. Because the first like a few days or weeks of like uh, of this war, um, they were kind of outnumbered because the boxers kind of used like. Oh yeah, the reason why they're called boxers because they use like a type of martial arts with sword, with like a uh, like Chinese swords. They didn't really use guns. They might uh, some of them use guns, but most of them use like swords and like uh, like martial arts. So uh, like the Americans and British called them boxers because they would fight with their fists and they're like uh, but yeah, this one's the German version of the song. But yeah. But it's pretty interesting because uh, counting the many times China was abused, like the Opium Wars, by these big, um, by these big superpowers, for just a ragtag of um, a ragtag group of Chinese had enough and they just fought, and they were winning for a little bit and then just got crushed once uh, Russian reinforcements came. I'm pretty sure there's a Chinese version, but I don't really know. Let's go, finally found diamonds. I've been mining for these for a while. I've lost most of my equipment during a war that happened not that long ago. Which is the main reason why I stopped playing, because I got mad that I lost all my never diamond. Hey, here's a Japanese version of 50 Days at Peking. Why? It's not letting me up. Finally. I'm pretty sure there's a Spanish and Italian version after this. Ah, 
しい」「はなのせくいまやきのうみ」「ボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボンボ And I'm pretty sure this is the Spanish or Italian version. What is this do? Messi. Oh. Oh. I never used this before, I haven't seen these yet. Right back to this. Next product is gold. After this, I'm pretty sure this uh, the video, um, this compilation of different uh, of different uh, Peking uh, language versions. Okay, that's actually pretty good. So it doesn't really show signs. What's the distance for this to where you see signs? Uh, so the main reason why I went towards the desert is that there was a never porter there just randomly. And I don't know why that big cross was there too. 
After this, I think it might be Sink to Bismarck or. Hey, our another sponsor. Let's go. I don't know what this is. Plan? They're at it again with false attacks on Congressman Tom O'Halloran. Here's what the plan really does: creates thousands of Arizona jobs in the fastest growing. I might jobs. cut out this one because we'll this might be political, and I don't think YouTube likes that. Utility bills, and we take on climate change, clean energy. It's a win for our economy and their future. Thank you, Congressman O'Halloran. Okay. People with ADHD oh save 10 God. hours studying with this Chrome extension. <sighs> no, by all means, I skip go this ahead. Way. Skip the ad. Save a few seconds. I have to do a lot of reading for my job. Fuck off. Where the hell? Oh, okay, okay. This is the Ottoman Empire one. I actually enjoy this. I was confused because I said Norwegian something. This one has really good instrumentals, has no lyrics though. The Ottoman Empire for me is a very interesting um, country slash um, empire because, to be honest, it, ex it existed for like at least a thou for a thousand year because it expanded from twelve hundred from the twelve hundreds all the way to nineteen uh, twenty two, which is the official end of the Ottoman Empire. And the main thing about the Ottomans, about their history, is that um, for a long time Europe actually feared them because they were kind of like, um, because they were like Muslim or like Islamic, like uh, empire. So for a long time, how do I make a bookshelf? But for a long time, uh, Europe was afraid of them. So, basically, the Ottoman Empire was basically the Soviet Union before there was communism. Because, like, most of, because, like, they were, like, the Crusades, like, most of Europe feared them. Mostly in, like, the Balkans, like, the Romanian, like, uh, area, like, where, like, Serbia, Austria, like, Austria, Hungary, like, that area. They mostly feared them because they were sitting right by, like, they were right by the Ottoman Empire, like, right by Istanbul. Or not really by Istanbul, near like, uh, near like Greece occupied, uh, Ottoman Empire. Like, Gre like, Ottoman Empire uh, had Greece occupied for a long time. But after a while, Europe didn't really fear them since they were more advanced than them. So after a while, um, the Ottoman Empire would be known as the stick man of Europe. Which, for me, the Ottoman Empire is probably my favorite thing to study, considering the time span, like how many leaders they had. From like the 1200s to 
Oh yeah, the main reason why I'm adding a lot of librarians because I want to get a lot more enchantments and I'm gonna industrialize this place a little bit more. But that's the main reason I'm gonna add a, like a tool factory with weapons and like toolsmith and then another one for uh, fetchers for arrows and stuff. I think the anthem spell ends soon. And this is like probably the only anthems I actually use an orchestra to like uh, play it besides God Save the Queen. And by my knowledge might be the only anthem that actually is that is only instrumental. Alright, here's the Soviet Union uh, in English. The interesting thing about this is it's actually the anthem for the Communist Party of USA, which has been running since the early eight from eighteen like eighteen seventy nine. Actually, a very interesting thing is that May Day actually originated from the United States because during the eighteen seventy, there was an event that happened where a uh, lot of workers rose up against like uh, different companies and factories because they wanted better uh, work hours, like uh, eight hours instead of like twelve-hour uh, work days each week or like every week. So that's where the United States uh, Communist Party kind of came from, where it, like the birth of it. And that's the origins of May Day. Like on May first, like er like most of the most like of the world, as an international like Workers' Day. Uh, it was a pretty bloody day. A lot of people were kind of killed because they're like protests trying to make it like an eight-hour workday in the United States in multiple countries. So that's kind of the origins of May Day, and that's like the first ever like major like socialist uh, uprising, and actually took place in the United States instead of like uh, Russia. Or, I might be mixing up dates, it probably didn't take place since 1879, it could have been, it, it was somewhere around that, like, it was around, like, the 1870, 1880s, around that, like, uh, year group, where, like, the first, like, where, like, the protests and uprisings took place. But I'm pretty sure in the official uh, 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 Communist Party of the United States, they took out the uh, Stalin part. I'm pretty sure after this one is either Think the Bismarck or the Nick Hilly songs. At least the spike glass doesn't have like uh, durability. I can use it as long as I want, as much as I want. Okay. Okay. Here's the OD of show up, but uh, I don't know what version this is, but I actually really like it. I like the. It's, it kind of sounds like a more modern version of the OD of show up uh, song. Like the OD of show up restoration song. It sounds very nice. It's more of a modern take on it.
Hey guys, in the comment section, uh, type down what's your favorite Stoliet song from this, um, from this video. What's your favorite Imperial Japanese song? And what's your favorite, um, which one's your favorite Nick Haley song? Because I actually want to know what's your guys' favorite songs to this. For me, uh, my favorite, uh, Stoliet song would be, uh, we shall be like, actually, it'll be any of them, because sto any Soviet song sounds terrific. Any Soviet song sounds terrific. Uh, my, but I think my favorite would be on the Hills of Manchuria, any version, because they all sound great. Uh, my Japanese favorite would be Batalia and probably the Odia Showa Restoration song. And oh yeah, and then for that probably and then for oh uh, I like the Nick Kelly song Blame on the Kellys uh, or not uh, that one the other one uh, I think it was like I forgot but yeah I had to do something. Uh, I am back. Uh, gonna harvest more crops. I'm not sure I have enough um, sturgeon cane. Nah. I think after this is three more stones. Blame on the Kellys. Uh, oh, stone one, two. Let's go. Blame on the Kellys. Blame on the Kellys. Blame. I will. Nick Kelly is a very interesting uh, guy because he's probably my favorite uh, Western outlaw, even though he's even though he's a um, outlaw in Australia. I recommend you guys to watch any video on Nick Kelly. He's very interesting, and he uh, and I kind of like some of his morals. Besides killing a few officers, uh, like a few police officers, but he's kind of like a Robin Hood like figure. Blame it on the Kelly boys. Um, the song was actually from the 1970s movie Nick Kelly played. Uh, Nick Kelly was played by uh, Mick Jagger. And yeah, the, that's the first time I heard about Nick Kelly and heard the song, and I absolutely love it. But uh, the movie uh, starring Mick Jagger isn't that good there's a better version of the movie uh that was a uh, nick kelly movie that was made in 2001 which is a lot more better but i but i like the the 1970s one because i had a pretty good soundtrack like that's like these type of western songs but this one was my favorite and also unlike the other songs i can't really explain nick kelly because he's a very complicated um, man, so I highly suggest like researching about him.
Oh, here's my- here's a superior version of the Nick Kelly song. This one was actually made by, uh, Extra Credits. Which is, um, our Extra History. The, they're basically the same thing, but it was made for the Nick Kelly series. Which I actually really enjoy. It's one of my favorite uh, series from Extra Credits and Extra History. Uh, next to, um, um, Suleiman the Magnificent and, uh, uh, Catherine the Great. Those are my favorite. Uh, I would rank them. My first is, um, uh, Suleiman the Magnificent. Second would be, um, uh, the Achilles series. And the third would be Catherine the Great. Because that was, like, during the golden age of, uh, extra, extra history. Okay, next is going to be sinking the Bismarck, and I might uh, end, the episode, uh, end the video right there. Which is my, one of my favorite songs about uh, the Bismarck. Night came the British ship, the Hood, and every British seaman he knew and understood. They had to sink the Bismarck, the terror of the sea. Stop those guns as big as steers and those shells as big as trees. We find that German battleship that's making such a fuss. We gotta sink the Bismarck, cause the world depends on us. Hit the decks are running, boys. It's been those guns there. That's actually um, made by uh, Johnny uh, Dorton. Um, but yeah. The hood found the Bismarck, and on that fatal day, the Bismarck started firing 15 miles away. We gotta sink the Bismarck, was the battle sound. But when the smoke had cleared away, the mighty hood went down. For six long days and weary nights, they tried to find her train. Churchill told the people, put every ship for sale. Cause somewhere on that ocean, I know she's gotta be. We gotta sink the Bismarck to the bottom of the sea. They find that German battleship that's making such a fuss. We gotta sink the Bismarck cause the world depends on us. Hit the decks are running, boys, it's been those guns around. When we find the Bismarck, we gotta cut her down. The fog was gone the seventh day, and they saw the morning sun. Ten hours away from homeland, the Bismarck... I'm pretty sure this is the, the main reason why I might get caught right around. We found that German battleship, and we're gonna cut her down. The British guns were aimed, and the shells were coming fast. The first shell hit the Bismarck, they knew she couldn't last. That mighty German battleship is just a memory. 
Sink the Bismarck was the battle cry that shook the seven seas. We found that German battleship for making such a fuss. We had to sink the Bismarck cause the world depends on us. We hit the deck a running and we spun those guns around. Yeah, we found that mighty Bismarck and we cut the cutter down. We found that German battleship for making such a fuss. We had to sink the Bismarck cause the world depends on us. We hit the deck a running and we spun those guns around. We found that mighty Alright, uh, you know, gonna end the video. Well, it's been fun, everyone, but I got I'm gonna get off now. Hey, the song's repeating. Well, it's been fun, everyone. Gotcha Gaming, signing off.